In this lecture, we're going to create a simple Angular application that displays a joke to the user, just like the application you see on the screen right now. Even though the application is very simple, we're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn that components are the building blocks of an Angular application. We're going to learn what annotations are and how to use them in TypeScript. We're going to learn how to import code from other files. We're going to learn how to package our application into an, something called an Angular module. And we're going to learn how to bootstrap an Angular application. So it starts on a web page. Let's begin with a blank plunker. So let's close this one. Let's open up the script.ts file and let's create a class called joke component. So for those of you who are new to ES6 JavaScript and new to TypeScript, a class is a new feature of ES6, which we will explain in much more detail in the next section. But to summarize, it's a blueprint for creating objects with specific functions and properties already attached to it. Now the word component isn't random. Components are a feature of Angular that let us create a new HTML language. And they are how we structure Angular applications. So if we look at our index.html file, we'll see that HTML comes with a bunch of pre-built tags, like HTML, head, link, script, body, div, input, form. Each of these tags look and behave a certain way. And in Angular, we create new custom tags with their own look and behavior. For instance, we might create a tag called joke. An Angular application is therefore just a set of custom tags that interact with each other. And we call those tags components. So going back into our script.ts file, the code that controls a component we put into a class like the joke component class. But how do we link this joke component class with a tag in our HTML? We use a new feature of TypeScript called annotations and specifically an annotation called component. The at component is an annotation. An annotation automatically add some boilerplate code to the class, function, or property it's attached to. You could write Angular without using annotations. You would just have to write the boilerplate code yourself. But there's not really any point, especially if you're using TypeScript. So we're gonna be using annotations throughout this course. We're gonna use other annotations later on. However, the main one for working with components is the at component annotation here. We can configure our component annotation by passing it an object with various parameters. In our example, the at component has one parameter called selector, and this tells Angular which tag to link this class to. And by setting the selector to joke, we've told Angular that whenever it finds a tag in the HTML, like joke, to use an instance of the joke component class to control it. Before we can use at component though, we need to import it like so. So this line is saying that we want to import the component code from the module Angular Core. We leave it to system.js to figure out how to load the component code from Angular Core, or even where Angular Core is. We don't care. We're just telling the module loader which code we want and the name of the module we want to load it from. So this code here with the curly braces, this might not look like JavaScript, but it is. This is something called destructuring, and that's a feature of ES6 JavaScript, and again, more on that in the next section. So if you're coming from a language like Python or Java, you'll be used to the concept of imports. Basically, we are pulling in dependencies from another file and making it available in this file. Even though we've added the tag to our index.html file, so far this isn't doing much yet though. We want Angular to replace 
this joke tag with some HTML. To do that, we use another attribute of the component decorator called template. And I'm just going to paste in some template code. So we've just got a H1 tag with the name of the joke, and then next to it, a P tag with the punchline to the joke. That's pretty hard to read though. The HTML is all written on one line, but I'd like to read it on multiple lines. There's a new feature of ES6 JavaScript called template strings, which lets us define multi-line strings. So let's use that instead. Template strings use a special character called a backtick. It's not a single quote, it's something called a backtick. So you'll see it's like a single quote at 45 degrees. You'll find it on your keyboard somewhere. On my Mac keyboard, it's on the bottom left. We'll be digging into this in much more detail in the next section. For now, just accept that using backtick lets us define strings on multiple lines like the one above. Again, if we ran this code now, we would see it's still not working. We've defined a component with a custom tag. We've added a tag to our HTML, but we haven't told Angular that we want to use Angular on this page. To do this, we need to do something called bootstrapping. In Angular 2, your code is structured into packages called Angular modules, or ng modules for short. Every app requires at least one module, the root module, that we usually call app module by convention. So just a quick note, we are using the term module for two different concepts. In JavaScript, the term module generally refers to code which exists in a single file. An ng module is a different concept. It combines code from different files together into one package. An ng module therefore contains functionality from multiple files a module, though, refers to functionality in a single file. When I use the word module, I'm talking about JavaScript modules. And when I use the word ng module or Angular module, I'm specifically talking about Angular module. But let me show you. Let's create our root Angular module. To define an Angular module, we first create a class. I'm going to call my class app module. And then we annotate it with another decorator called ng module. So just like component, ng-module takes as input an object, and we can configure it with a few parameters. The first one is imports. So this is going to be a list of other Angular modules that export material we need in this Angular module. Almost every application's root module should import the browser module. The declarations. This is the list of components or directives belonging to this Angular module. I'm going to add the joke component that we're creating in our application. And the bootstrap property identifies the root component that Angular should bootstrap when it starts the application. So browser module is another Angular module that contains all the needed Angular bits and pieces to run our application in the browser. So Angular itself is split into separate Angular modules, so we only ever need to import the ones we really use. Some other common modules you'll see in the future are the Forms module, the Router module, and the HTTP module. But we also need to remember to add imports for ng module and browser module. So we'll add them to the top of our file. So ng module actually comes from Angular Core itself. So I can just type it in next to it like that, and that will import both of those bits of code from the Angular Core package. And the browser module can be found from the package Angular Platform Browser. Now we have defined our root Angular module called app module. We need to bootstrap the application using it. So we type platform browser dynamic bootstrap module, and then we pass the name of our module. And just like everything else in Angular, 
we haven't seen platform browser dynamic before. It's available from another file, so we need to import it. You might be wondering why we're we going through this whole process of bootstrapping. Why doesn't Angular do this for us? That's because in Angular 2, bootstrapping is platform specific. In Angular 1, we assumed that Angular would only ever be run in a browser. Angular 2 makes no such assumption. We could be writing an Angular 2 code for a mobile device using a solution like Ionic or NativeScript. We could be loading up Angular on a node server so we can render HTML for web crawlers that don't run JavaScript. Angular 2 isn't limited to only working in the browser, which is why we need to tell Angular exactly how we want it to bootstrap itself. In our case, we are running in the browser, so we use the platform browser dynamic function to bootstrap our application. So an Angular application is architected as a tree of components, stemming from one root component. Your root component is the component you configured on your root ng module in the bootstrap property. So in our case, it's the joke component. By bootstrapping with joke component, we are saying that it's the root component for our application. In the template for our joke component, we could add tags for other components. So in here, we could add tags for other child components. And those components could add tags for other child components, and so on and so on. However, in our index.html file, we would never see anything other than the tag for our root component. So we would only ever see one tag in here, and the tag that we'll see is the joke tag because that's the tag for our root component. So now if we run our application, we should see it running on the right hand side preview pane. If it doesn't work for you, like it's obviously not working for me, the thing to do is to open up the developer tools and check the console. So we have some errors in our console. What happens is when the plunker loads, it tries to convert the TypeScript into JavaScript in the browser. That's this yellow line above. This is saying that TypeScript is transpiling the code to JavaScript. So then the error lines below it are the errors from TypeScript. It's failed to convert it into JavaScript. And it's telling me the line number which is having the problem with. So it's line 10 in script JS. And it's telling me it should be expecting a comma. So let's have a look at line 10 in our script.js file. Oh, I've, <laughs> I've ended the string with a semicolon. It actually doesn't need a semicolon there at all because it's part of a, a map. So now if I, let me keep this open the bottom here, clear it. And now let's stop and rerun. Okay. Now everything's run correctly and we can see our application running in the preview pane. So if you ever have a problem or, or things aren't happening as expected in Plunker, make sure to open up the console and make sure to look at any errors and see if there's any errors that are being printed out and then resolve those errors. So in summary, a component is the building block of an Angular application. It lets us create a new HTML language of custom tags and link them with JavaScript classes which describe the behavior of that tag. An application is composed of a tree of such components glued together, all descending from one root component. And we package together related components and supporting code into something called an Angular module, which we use to bootstrap Angular onto a web page. So congratulations, we've created or started to create our first Angular application. We're going to continue with this application for the rest of this section. And in the next lecture, we're going to talk about a feature called string interpolation.